Warning, the following podcast is a shit show, and the individuals you are about to meet are idiots. Their opinions, anecdotes, and advice contain zero nutritional value. This is the critical human condition and all of its strangeness. This is life, according to an idiot. Hi, everybody. Hello. You're listening to a podcast. You sure are. Or, or you're watching... Uh, what? A podcast. <gasps> In 3D? Oh my god. This is our first attempt at doing video recordings and video stuff. So you might be seeing this on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Also Patreon. Right. We'll also probably have little clips and stuff on Instagram, TikTok, other media formats, social media platforms porn hub there we go um x videos <laughs> <laughs> list goes on myspace myspace our blog uh -huh. jeremy dot blog dot wordpress mm -hmm. dot com dot go daddy dot go daddy forward slash porn hub <laughs> <laughs> i hope this turns out well i guess if you're watching it it turned out salvageable yeah which is a success so we'll run with it we're testing it out with our minis and our creepy pastas first with hopefully the end goal to be doing our full length episode so if you're seeing our faces and you like that let us know yeah and we'll try and prioritize doing this stuff more mm -hmm. your feedback is helpful also hi welcome to our podcast according to an idiot i am your host mo i'm your other host Jeremy. All right, let's talk about what we came here to talk about. So today we are talking about the RMS Queen Mary. A boat? How'd you know? I was a wild guess. What gave it away, the RMS or the Queen Mary? The combination. <laughs> Fair enough. What What does RMS stand for? Royal Mail Ship. Hmm, okay. I think. Is this haunted mail? Are we getting haunted There's mail? There's no real mail. It's not like the mailman kind of mail. Okay. I will cover it in the notes. I believe that's what it stands for. Royal Mail Ship. It delivers things. Normally people. <gasps> but also things. Okay. Okay. So Ooh. without further ado, shall we learn about the spookiest ship in the world? I would love that. All right. But I would argue the spookiest ship in the world is us. We're a ship? Like people, like shipping. Oh, shipping. Shipping, shipping people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we do a podcast about horror stuff. Okay. <laughs> Do you like ships? No, not really. You have to say yes for this. My biggest fear in the world is the ocean. But what keeps you from the ocean, a ship? Unless I don't go on it and I don't go near the ocean. This is a world where there's no planes and you have to get to another continent. Uh, I will. Hot air balloon's not an option. So don't even say it. A blimp. <sighs> Fuck. Historically, yeah, that would be around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you like ships, right? That's weird. Uh, do you like big ships? More than little ones. And do you like ghosts? I do like ghosts. If you answered yes to one or more of those questions, then boy, do I have a story for you. It's good. I answered yes to one. Yeah. So I made sure to mo-proof that. Um, <laughs> today we'll be covering the RMS Queen Mary, a now retired ocean liner built by the John Brown and company marine engineering and shipbuilding firm for use by the that's a i can't believe i wrote this down in my fucking notebook <laughs> john brown and company marine engineering and shipbuilding firm that's a big one for use by the cunard white star shipping line don't forget that fact it's very important <laughs> the, the queen mary launched on september 26 1934 completion took three and a half years and cost a grand total of three and a half million pounds sterling, which at the time equated to $17.5 million, which when adjusted for inflation equals $382 million today, US dollars. I'm learning a lot already. Which when adjusted once more into Burger King Whoppers <laughs> is 76,718,112 Whoppers. Wow, that really puts things in perspective. The ship, <laughs> the ship was named after... Mary of Tech, wife of King George V of England. Was that Mad King George? No, this is the, the most recent King George. Ugh, boring. Okay. We'll get into it. For you knuckle draggers out there, George V and Queen Mary had six kids. This is a little history lesson that you might enjoy and might want to skip through. 
When the king died in 1936, his eldest son was crowned King Edward VIII, but Edward abdicated a year later because he got the hots for an American divorcee, mm -hmm. which the church and government considered fucking disgusting and illegal. Mm -hmm. Fun fact. So Edward chose to forfeit the crown for love, kicking the can down the road to his younger brother, who was crowned King George VI, <laughs> who was the dad of everyone's favorite monarch, Queen Elizabeth, who just died. Rest in peace, Queen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? So this is named after Queen Elizabeth's mom. No, grandma. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, so basically, <laughs> this ship was, yeah, named after her grandma. Side note, yeah, RMS means royal mail ship. Okay. Just consulted with my notes. The Queen Mary began as a standard liner transporting cargo and passengers across the Atlantic. After World War II broke out, the Queen Mary was converted into a troop ship and ferried Allied soldiers during the war. During her service, the RMS Queen Mary transported over 2 million passengers and approximately 810,000 military personnel during the war. Prime Minister Winston Churchill traveled aboard the ship multiple times and was quoted as saying that the Queen Mary shortened the war by a year. Hmm. After World War II, the RMS Queen Mary was refitted for passenger service and given some modern upgrades. Finally retired in 1967, the ship was permanently moored in Long Beach, California, where it operates now as a hotel, museum, and event center. So you can visit this place now. One interesting detail I forgot to mention, the Queen Mary was rather massive at 1,018 feet long and weighing more than 81,000 tons, making it notably larger than the Titanic mm -hmm. and twice as heavy. So this is a big ship. This isn't like a little uh, bitch ship. This is a mama <laughs> ship. This is a papa ship. This is a mm -hmm. big ship. And for all you boatheads out there, I know you're out there, get a, load of these, get a load of these specs. The Queen Mary was packing 24 Yarrow boilers. Wow. That kicked out 400 pounds per square inch of steam at 700 degrees Fahrenheit and four Parsons turbines. You know what that means. That collectively drove four propellers turning at a skull crushing 200 RPM. All that to say, the Queen Mary had a top speed of 32.84 knots, which is absolutely insane until you realize that's like 35 miles an hour. How? So slightly faster than a car can legally drive through a school zone. The Titanic mm -hmm. that we all know and love, when it crashed, was going 20.5 knots, 23.6 miles per hour. God. Puts it in perspective for you. It truly does. How many whoppers is that, though? Yeah, that's that's crazy. <laughs> Isn't it weird though how slow it goes? Like it makes sense because it's so heavy and it's the ocean, whatever. But well, like how fast does a cruise ship go? Hold on, can't go much faster than that. It's probably slower. Cruise ships go thirty-four point five miles an hour. Well, on the other hand, commercial planes, we're going above, not the ocean, but the sky. Mm -hmm. Commercial planes cruise at about five hundred and seventy-five to six hundred miles per hour. And that's why I, I like planes. So much faster, obviously. Yeah. And no sharks that we know of. And also no like giant squids. That we know of. No giant squids in the eye. Mm -hmm. In the eye. In the, in the sky. <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> and in the eye. Out there with the eye. Do you think Steve Irwin would have liked giant squids? I'm sure he would have found them fascinating. Because I think no. I don't think he would have gone down and wrestled one, but I think he would have. That's all I need to know. Like to learn about them. You know, if he's not going to touch it, I sure as hell am not going to touch it. I mean, fair. I wouldn't I would discourage you from touching a giant squid. Thank you. Yeah, because I care about you. I will not. But also because it would just tear you in half and drown you. But they found whales that have like, you know, whales can get pretty. How long can a, let's just Google this is an <laughs> episode full of Googling. How <laughs> old can a whale get? So the, the shortest lifespan I'm seeing is humpback whales at 45. The oldest I'm seeing is. A blue whale at 90, 90 years old. Okay. All right. They found old whales that have scars and suction cups on them mm -hmm. because they got in battles with giant squids. A squid can take down, a giant squid can take down a whale or at least attack a whale comfortably. That's disgusting. I hate that. I agree. Ocean for me is also like one of my top fears. I'd rather fall from the sky than fall into the middle of the ocean. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Because at least then I'd explode when I hit into the right. ground, you know? Right. Scare a bunch of kids. Like, I'd rather, like, get whiplash than drown. Yeah. And wrestle with a fucking squid. Um, <laughs> how do I get back from that? Uh, 
So, you may be wondering how this ship came to be considered one of the most haunted establishments in the country, which it is, allegedly. Okay. The truth is that before retiring to a peaceful future as a hotel in Long Beach Harbor... It's a hotel? It's a hotel. It's a hotel and museum slash event center. Wow, okay. Before that happened, before it came to its final resting place in Long Beach Harbor, at least 47 people perished aboard the RMS Queen Mary. An alternate figure is uh, 16 crew members died and 41 passengers died. It's a little bit more than Mm, that. Okay. So let's talk about it. Deaths on board, all that kind of stuff. According to the book Ghosts of the Queen Mary by Brian Clune and Bob Davis, the first deaths associated with the ship occurred before it had even finished being built. Not a good sign. For sure. As the resident skeptic apparently now on the show, I'm going just to say that a lot of these figures are debated because of the spotty history the ships had Mm -hmm. and like the record keeping involved with it. So people say there's more, people say there's no ghosts, a bunch of ghosts, whatever. Well, I think we can all agree that some people died. That is a fact. And all you need is one for a ghost. That's true. So the ship's construction was divided into two phases due to the Great Depression. That kind of interrupted the construction. Construction began in December 1930 at a shipyard in Clydebank, Scotland. The Depression had kicked off in late 1929 and would eventually interrupt the project in December 1931 due to depleted funds, and the company was forced to pause the build laying off thousands of shipbuilders. Work would recommence in April 1934 after a successful bid on a loan from the British government. However, upon returning to the unfinished hall, workers allegedly discovered two men who had been employed prior to the layoff dead in a bottom chamber of the hall. These deaths are the least documented of all the tragedies aboard the Queen Mary. Mm. One popular story claims the bodies to be part of a suicide pact. Two gay lovers. They were so sad because they weren't going to work with each other anymore. Oh, my God. I'm so much more invested in this story now. (laughs) (laughs) This would have been a pact between two impoverished shipbuilders motivated by the company layoff. An equally questionable but more or less dramatic account pins the deaths on suffocation and poisoning from a buildup of toxic fumes. Mm. Based on reports that a welding torch was found with the bodies, unsafe welding in enclosed spaces can displace oxygen in the air with gases like helium argon, carbon dioxide, and even carbon monoxide. While this story is considered more urban legend than fact, to this day, guests and paranormal investigators often have reported hearing the sound of hands tapping against the walls in the lower sections of the ship near the hull. Mm, Like they're trying to get out? Yeah, probably. Most frequently in an area outside the old boiler room stage, near where the dead workers were rumored to have been discovered. A spirit that has been nicknamed John Henry by employees has been blamed for unexplained occurrences. Psychic researcher Peter James claimed to have communicated with said spirit, who supposedly identified itself as one of the two deceased shipbuilders. Hmm. When the Queen Mary was refitted to become a troop ship during World War II, its elegant exterior was masked with uniform navy gray paint. Its ornate interior rendered drab and militaristic. They gutted it, removing nearly six miles of carpet and 220 cases of fine china, crystal, tapestries, paintings, and other frivolous decor were all stored in warehouses during the war, along with the countless stateroom furniture pieces that would be replaced by military bunks. The interior's fine woodwork and murals were masked with leather for protection as well. With its new coat of paint and impressive speed, the ship would earn the nickname The Grey Ghost and it transported as many as 15,000 persons in a single voyage, often long distances without escort ships for protection. They were under constant threat of German U-boats, but the Queen Mary was capable of traveling at high speeds on signature zigzag courses, which prevented being struck and captured. So, like, if you're on board this, there was always the very real possibility that you guys would just get cleaved in half by a torpedo or something. Right, so, like, we got to get all the fine china out of here and make it... Ugly. It's going to become a Three Stooges sketch if we don't. So, even without any serious naval conflict casualties, the ship was constantly in harm's way, and its passengers likely experienced a collective air of dread and anxiety 24-7. Right, because torpedoes. Because torpedoes. If you subscribe to, I'll call it far-out paranormal theories, such as residual hauntings, Mm Mm-hmm which posit that concentrated amounts of negative energy, for example, an excess of traumatic and stressful experiences localized to a uh, specific place, can leave an imprint on a physical environment and, in a sense, record the events or emotions in said location. 
This, according to paranormal theory, creates a non-intelligent haunting, meaning that the trauma recorded through the negative energy manifests as a haunting. So because a bunch of people there were scared all the time, stressed out, you know, worried about them or their families or their lives, whatever, that sticks around. So basically, they manifested the haunting. Yeah. Because they were so grumpy and miserable all the time that they drew haunting stuff to them. Yeah, it like stinks up the ship. Energetically. Energetically. But the haunting occurs on a loop with spectral entities appearing to carry out the actions or tasks they had carried out at the time of the event in question. Hmm. Failing to notice or interact with human witnesses. When you hear stories of a haunted house or a haunted place or a ship like this, and people say, yeah, you can see people walking around, but they're not haunting you. They're just haunting the ship. It's because right. it's a residual haunting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're just stuck in time perpetually playing out their role. They don't even know they're there. Right. Or if you want to entertain my personal theory of ghosts, mm -hmm. it's a thin place of the space-time continuum, right? Because time is not linear. So people in their normal routines back in the day is just bleeding through some images. Fair enough. Into the modern day. Fair enough. <laughs> However, the queen... <laughs> That's going to blow someone's mind who's yes. listening to this. Yes. You're like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> and they're going to be listening. They're going to be like, that makes so much sense. Oh, my God. If that makes sense, you should buy my course, my 12-part course. Each part is $500. Wow. It is not a cult. No, it's not. I can't stress that enough. It's not a cult. But I will promise divinity mm -hmm. if you finish it. And that's on God. <laughs> I always, I always, I always piss off Cat whenever she says something matter of factly. I always be like, <laughs> "And that's on God." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna steal that. However, the Queen Mary wasn't totally helpless out on its risky trips across the sea. It had been armed with light anti-aircraft guns installed on its decks for self-defense along with large caliber guns along the sun deck to fend off enemy submarines and surface ships. But when the Queen Mary would eventually deal its first significant blow to another ship, it wouldn't use its artillery, and its target wouldn't even be an enemy vessel. On October 2nd, this is actually pretty fucked up. Mm -hmm. On October 2nd, 1942, the Queen Mary was on a dangerous course, roughly 700 miles west of Ireland's coast, when an escort fleet came to meet her convoy. One of these escorts was the HMS Curacao, an anti-aircraft cruiser that was assigned to protect the Queen Mary from aerial threat, although it was an older ship and much smaller. Mm -hmm. The RMS Queen Mary was carrying approximately 10,000 American troops of the 29th Infantry Division, and the HMS Curacao held a crew of 439 men. The HMS Curacao was sailing alongside the Queen Mary, which was steaming ahead in typical zigzag pattern to avoid being hit. The HMS Curacao had not accounted for this and was sailing too close to the Queen Mary. Oh, no. Upon taking a steep turn, the Queen Mary sliced through the HMS Curacao and split it in half. <gasps> Acting under orders not to stop due to risk of U-boat attacks, the Queen Mary steamed onward with a damaged hull, forced to leave the wrecked escort in its wake. The collision and subsequent sinking claimed 337 lives out of the 439 on board. Whoa. I mean, they were sizably larger. They just cut the thing in half. Most of those guys just drowned. That's n that's a lot of deaths, that, though. Uh, oof. And of allies, you know? Yeah. And the fact, too, it's, it's sad, too, that they couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. The guys that survived probably barely survived. Yeah. Today, there have been numerous reports of strange and disturbing noises heard coming from the bow of the ship. Fleeting sounds of rushing water and men screaming. Reported by staff and guests alike, paranormal investigators have contributed the phenomena to residual haunting from that event, suggesting that the men lost on board the Curacao still linger around the ship they died escorting. I wish that our timeline, magic and mysticism, was respected in a similar vein as science. Mm -hmm. So we just get like scientists to investigate this stuff and they're like, it's just haunting. Yeah. You're just haunted. Yeah. And then that's just like their professional. <laughs> that's just what it is. Yeah. yeah a sorry. paranormal investigator was respected the same as a scientist. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, would be problematic. Yeah. But it'd be cool. In an alternate universe, I would love that. Mm-hmm. So this next section I titled Churchill's Stench. All right. I'm intrigued. 
As mentioned previously, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill traveled aboard the Queen Mary frequently during World War II. Churchill would board the ship under the alias Colonel Warden and was assigned his own individual lifeboat in the event of disaster. Churchill had his own suite where he bided his time during voyages, anchored behind his desk, studying confidential documents and strategizing war plans. When it came time for Churchill to sign the D-Day Declaration, then known by the codename Operation Overlord, he was at his desk in his office on the Queen Mary. From his private quarters, Churchill spent countless hours mulling over complicated decisions that he knew would have historic consequences. Because of this, some guests and staff members of the hotel on the ship believe that a trace of Churchill remains at his desk after all these years. Now known as the Churchill Suite, Guests who have booked a stay in the PM's former office have experienced the overwhelming odor of thick cigar smoke that appears out of nowhere at random times. And mm. you might already know this too. Like Churchill was famous for always chomping a cigar constantly. Yeah. So it's one of his most distinguishing traits, his affinity for cigars. The hotel staff has come to blame the phantom smell on Churchill's ghost. There have also been sightings of a full-body apparition closely resembling a man looking like Churchill, which has appeared briefly standing on the promenade deck outside the gift shop. A handful of guests have also claimed to see a glimpse of the cigar-smoking dignitary wandering through the ship's acclaimed restaurant, Sir Winston's Restaurant and Lounge, which was named after him. So people have seen like a guy that's cosplaying as Churchill. Mm -hmm. When the waiters say, there are no cosplayers on the ship. Whoa. I'm 11 years old and I'm terrified right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So post-World War II, it's also worth noting that the Queen Mary had been used to transport injured soldiers after D-Day back to England. Several severely wounded soldiers succumbed to their wounds on the way back. After the war, the Queen Mary and her sister ship, the Queen Elizabeth, were loaned to the U.S. Maritime Service, which ran ships from Europe to the United States, retrieving American soldiers from foreign battlefields, returning them home. This lasted for several months until January 14, 1946. The RMS Queen Mary was docked in England and returned to her former glory, shedding her military hardware and weaponry in exchange for a cosmetic overhaul. Much needed. Soon the ship was restored to its lavish shape. Once again a luxury vessel, the Queen Mary spent February through April of 1946 transporting British war brides across the pond to reunite with their American husbands. She carried around 12,200 dependents to America during this time. Mm -hmm. Included with the brides were their infants and small children that had been born throughout the six years of war. Soldiers got busy. During this period, there was a death on board. A little girl, Jacqueline Torin, believed to be a child of a war bride, was no older than five when she drowned in the ship's second-class pool. Nicknamed Little Jackie, her spirit is believed to haunt the ship. People have heard gleeful giggling of a little girl emerge out of nowhere with no child in sight or on board. Similarly, the voice of a child has been reportedly heard with no apparent source. Guests and staff have claimed to hear the incoherent murmurs of a child paired with the sound of splashing water. This has been experienced in and around the ship's Royal Theater, which is the former site of the pool little Jackie drowned in. Mm -hmm. Most disturbing are the reports of a little girl calling out for her mother. A distress call guests have attempted to answer, only to discover there are no children nearby. <gasps> Paranormal investigators have claimed to capture EVPs of what could be a child's voice. And so-called psychics have claimed to see or make contact with a little girl called Jackie, as well as a little girl called Sarah, who one psychic reported to travel with Jackie, sensing a friendship between the two spirits. The records from the ship's earlier days are mostly lost. The name Sarah was linked to the drowning of another little girl in that same pool in 1949. A lot of girls drowning in these pools. Wow. Someone should look into that. In October 1948, while setting sail from New York, the Queen Mary's third officer, Thomas Marshall, slipped from a ladder and fell to his death. One of the ship's more frequently seen ghosts is the spectral image of a man walking the decks at night, which has come to be identified as Officer Marshall. After another decade carrying travelers across the Atlantic, the rapidly deteriorating ship was slated for mandatory retirement in 1967. So how long has the ship been in service for? I don't remember when you said it was made. It was made in 36. Okay, so like 30 years? Yeah. Killed a bunch of people and they're like, hmm... We should probably... Hotel. Yeah. I'm thinking a hotel. Nice big pool. 
No lifeguards. And let's get a bunch of little kids on there. <laughs> Push them in. No ladders like it's The Sims. Yeah, delete all the ladders <laughs> as soon as they get there. So after another decade carrying travelers across the Atlantic, the rapidly deteriorating ship was slated for a mandatory retirement in 1967. The Cunard White Star Line would end up selling the Queen Mary for $3.45 million dollars, to the city of Long Beach, California, who planned on permanently docking her as a floating maritime museum and hotel. The ship arrived in California on December 9th, 1967, and remains there to this day. The ship prospered initially, but by the late 1970s, business began to dry up. The attraction traded hands, eventually being bought by Disney. Wow. Who planned on building a new theme park called Port Disney on the land adjacent to the Queen Mary, with the ship serving as a park centerpiece. Wow. Huh. Okay. Unfortunately, the, the Port Disney plans failed, and in 1993, the RMS Foundation leased the ship from the city of Long Beach, shutting it down for several months before reopening it to the public. During its months of inactivity, only security guards were allowed on board, mm -hmm. guarding the ship from like potential vandalism, trespassers. Right, right. Members of that security team reported a number of unexplainable occurrences in the three months that they spent guarding the vacant ship. Mm -hmm. On several occasions, a guard would be doing surveillance throughout the Queen Mary's interior, and they would hear voices. The voices would lead guards to rooms and corridors around the ship so that as soon as one had finally followed the sound to its logical source, the voices would resume in some adjacent place. Hmm. This would continue until the guard on duty had scoured the entire facility with no physical sign of trespassers. These guards would, like, actually stop showing up. Yeah. On more than one occasion, security would hear what sounded like a party coming from the ballroom, including band music and the muffled chatter of a crowd. Upon reaching the room, the music and voices quickly faded, and they found the space untouched. Whoa. Another famous spirit believed to haunt the ship to this day is something affectionately called Grumpy the Growling Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Grumpy appears to take up residence beneath the stairs that led to a storage room under the first class pool, but has also been heard in the hallways leading into the pool area. Grumpy is viewed as a trickster spirit due to his favorite pastime of growling at people in order to scare them. Oh my god. A team of psychics investigating the hotel theorized that Grumpy is the ghost of a passenger who had accidentally killed a woman on board long ago and hid the body. This is like a, uh, they're basing this off of accounts, like, uh, okay. I guess there was, there was a case where a guy killed a woman and hit her on the, on the ship. Mm, okay. I thought they were just, like, pulling that story out of their ass. Because psychics often do that. Like, they're just like, yeah. well, you know what? Actually, he killed three people and then ate their corpses. Mm-hmm. So, this guy allegedly hid a body in that storage room before going back to his room and committing suicide. This is apparently an actual documented murder that occurred on the ship, but the psychics had little in the way of an argument for tying Grumpy to the real killer. It sounds like it was just a stretch. They're thinking, okay, there's this scary Grumpy guy, and yeah. he's in this place where this body was found. Maybe it's the killer, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know? It could just be a dad. Grumpy was the subject of much investigation by paranormal expert Bob Davis, who conducted the most thorough ghost hunting excursions on the Queen Mary. Davis claimed that a trace of cigarette smoke could often be smelled before or after being growled at, especially under the stairs in the room beneath the pool. So it's Winston Churchill. It's Winston Churchill. He's grumpy. Well, cigarette, not cigar. Are we assuming that he didn't do both? Yeah, really. If you do one, yeah, you do both. do both. He had to do both. He only smoked cigarettes when he was yelling at kids. Exactly. So this one's a little bit more, this is the more, the more notable case on the ship. This is John Petter, one of the more gruesome accounts on this ship's history. March 1966. The Queen Mary was steaming across the Atlantic. At this point in its history, it was a high-end passenger ship with 3,000 guests and crew on board. It was a cold early morning at sea, and while most on board were asleep, not to wake until sunrise, a small team of late shift crewmen were stirring about. A horn blew in the belly of the ship, joined by the synchronized flash of a wall-mounted light. This commotion signaled the start of the watertight drill, an automated process in which each of the ship's steel hatchway doors were slowly guided along a track until tightly sealing. That happens to, like, protect passengers from, like, pirates and stuff, right? In this case, it's rough seas. Mm, okay. So you don't want water getting into the guts of the ship, so you're going to seal everything up. 
This specific drill was initiated due to inclement weather to keep separate sections of the ship's maintenance quarters contained and prevent any water from flooding into the sensitive areas. You've probably heard the phrase batten down the hatches. That's what this means, pretty much. Okay. It was business as usual until 15 minutes later, engineering staff found 18-year-old crew member John Petter crushed by door number 13. Petter was an enthusiastic newcomer to the crew, and according to his co-workers, he enjoyed playing chicken with the hatchway doors Uh. during watertight drills. However, some crew members mentioned that prior to the drill, John had been asking where his missing wrench was, and that perhaps he had attempted to quickly jump through the closing steel door to grab his tool before it shut. Either way, John was discovered with his top half outside the sealed door frame, His face blew with a trail of blood pouring from his nose, crushed, quote, from liver to collarbone. Christ. John had indeed found the missing wrench. As they discovered his body smashed in the hatch, it was still clutched in his fist. (sighs) Presumably used by a dying John to pry the hatch open. The engineering team called in the night shift nurse, who found John to be totally unresponsive. Surprise. (laughs) Yeah. After the hatches had been reopened and John was rushed to the infirmary, he was officially pronounced dead. The story eventually spread to the top deck, and in later decades, guests and staff knew him as Half Hatch Harry. Hmm. A ghost who many would continue to spot outside door number 13, and is said to haunt the engine room. The apparition of a young man with a patchy beard donning an old engineer's uniform has been wandering the claustrophobic corridors that cut through the engine room and boiler room, some say searching for his lost wrench. <laughs> but people have seen this ghost probably the most out of any. Mm, okay. While not directly attributed to the ghost of John Petter, workers have claimed to see shadows crossing the engine room, and in several accounts, people have been chased by said shadows. I mean, like, isn't that what you would do if you were a ghost? Like, you gotta have fun sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And this one, too, I guess the the half-hatch Harry also really likes women and will, like, pinch them and pull their hair and, like, breathe down their necks. Of course. Of course. Yeah, he died in his in his prime, man. Yeah, 18. He might have still been a virgin. Who knows? Who knows back then? Mm-hmm. But he was a sailor, so he probably... Out in the seas. That's true. For a long time. But there's always a port. It's true. That's about all I have for ghosts. This one I wanted to add it just for fun because... There was a ghost named Jeremy on board, (gasps) and that's my name. Oh, my God. Uh, First contacted by psychic Peter James during his paranormal investigations on board the Queen Mary. The ghost of a young boy named Jeremy allegedly haunts the ship. Jeremy is believed to be a spirit often playing near the first class pool. According to Peter James, the energy he identified as Jeremy (laughs) appeared to be bonded with the ghost of little Jackie. The most interesting aspect of Jeremy is that his name is also Jeremy. Oh, my God. Okay. And that is the tale of the RMS Queen Mary. (laughs) I feel like I need to go visit it now. Yeah. I mean, if you're ever in California, Southern California. Oh, it's in California? I missed that part. That's the resting place now. Its hotel is stationed in Long Beach Bay or Harbor. Okay. Cool. Actually, I think I was looking at some reviews and it was like... The toilets don't flush and they smell. It's very old, obviously, and <laughs> and very small. So, like, a lot of the rooms aren't mm. as idealistic as you'd think. Right. We should just start a GoFundMe of travel expenses and going to these places and staying overnight with, like, a recorder. <laughs> <laughs> the, the instrument, not... <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> just hot cross buns Ooh. all night. <laughs> Until the ghosts get pissed off enough to punch us yeah it started attacking us that'd be lovely that's our next step i think i think that's how we progress our career i would love that that'd be so fun Uh, paranormal investigators i would be so scared that'd be fantastic and i wouldn't i think i would there's one of two i think i would either be terrified or i would not be able to take it seriously at all and i think it would vary depending on the location well okay what i'm anticipating this is what i see in my head i think that my expectation is that I would be scared and you would not be, but I think mm-hmm. in actuality it would be swapped. Actually, you're probably right. <laughs> I'd probably be like, Mo, stop it. Stop. You'd be like, all the ghosts, you can come and you can visit Jeremy tonight in his room. Everybody, everybody do that. Like, and I'm like, no. please, no, stop it. I, I believe now. But the thing is, here, the thing about me, 
is that if there wasn't a camera following me, I would not go to any of these places. But mm. if you put me on in front of a camera, I become brave. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just go like, I have to entertain. Let's go down to the basement. <laughs> you know? Because there's some there's some like mm -hmm. fake level of security being like, well, if the cam like a ghost isn't going to show up on camera, so I can right, go down right. to the basement with a camera. Or like if something happens to me, at least people see. Yeah. Something. I think that I would do it either way camera or no camera i would too just have seen you places well that contradicts exactly what you said five seconds ago <laughs> that's me that's me baby I, i'm loose cannon if that's something y'all want look out for our gofundme gofundme also called our patreon which you should check out mm -hmm. if you don't already support us well, our patreon we have to like deliver right you know for a gofundme we can just take the money we still need to deliver on the gofundme and then retire well we can <laughs> yeah, right. we, yeah we can just fraud disappear mm -hmm. there's no contractual obligations i believe there, there literally are mm, no no mm -mm. fair enough you've convinced me um hold on hold on should jeremy and i become paranormal investigators okay mo is consulting the pendulum once again i think it's saying no it's not moving <laughs> <laughs> it feels, it's rolling its eyes it's yeah it's feeling indifferent and for those of you who have watched this episode audio only i don't know if we addressed that you had a pendulum earlier mm. but when you heard us making a decision there was a pendulum in the room <laughs> yeah, i was consulting mo was using. the universe the universe the spirits the akashic records yes flowed into my arm <laughs> and by extension, the pendulum. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you, Jeremy, for looking into the the ship. You're welcome. That murdered people. Some people got murdered on. Now people rest their weary little heads in and smell their shit because it doesn't flush. <laughs> <laughs> it's got low water pressure, too. I remember that from the reviews. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the showers are really bad. I can't wait to go. Let's go. It sounds great. It's gonna be. It's gonna be so much fun. This was actually a paid ad for Queen Mary Hotel, right? RMS Queen Mary Hotel. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening to our episode. If you liked it, be sure to rate us on Spotify and iTunes. Give us five stars. If you give us any sort of review, we will read it. So I hope that's some incentive. Stay up to date on our episodes and trash memes by following us on mm -hmm. social platforms, Facebook and Instagram at According to an Idiot and on Twitter because I refuse to use the other name at Idiots Accord. X, X. X rhymes with sex because uh, it's so cool, yo. A what other social platforms? Patreon. Oh, my God. We have a Patreon. You can yes, get. We do exclusive episodes we have a creepy pasta series you can get a little sampling of that by listening to our jeff the killer episode and if you like that definitely check out the other ones you can vote for topics that you want you can give us feedback we have early episode releases ad free listening all the good stuff yeah or if you just want to support us without getting anything back that's cool too you can which is weird right why would you want to do that but I would say we're at a point now where it's worth the price of admission. Mm -hmm. We have some decent backlog stuff up there. Yeah. And honestly, for me, the creepypastas are slowly becoming my favorite part of the podcast. Yeah. They honestly are a lot of fun. They're very fun. So I really encourage you guys to check it out. If you haven't listened to one yet, um, creepypastas are internet stories, kind of like haunted chain emails. Mm -hmm. That's the general vibe. They are pretty bad, yeah. but in a fun way. We don't read them beforehand. So we are as surprised as you. There's been a few that were actually scary. Yeah. In the beginning. Remember the dentist one? Oh, yeah. 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 And the... Uh, normal porn for normal people yeah that one was creepy too Those for are sure. creepy. so yeah check it out you can also send us emails at according to an idiot at gmail.com thank you guys for listening this has been according to an idiot i'm jeremy i'm mo and i will see you in time we love you bye <laughs> <laughs>